Long Island, known to have been the cradle of aviation. But how many know that it was also the home of early radio? The island, with its long coastline and sandy soil, proved an excellent location for radio. The story of Long Island's wireless history is one of romance, intrigue, and suspense. Radio was new and exciting. The people involved in developing the technology were of interest to the public, and local Long Island reporters kept their newspapers up to date on the progress being made. The story begins in 1901, at which time Nikola Tesla traveled to shore, where, with the help of J.P. Morgan and architect Stanford White, he began to build a laboratory and tower. Tesla, a genius, was known for his invention of alternating current, lighting up the Chicago World's Fair and his harnessing of electricity at Niagara Falls. A Patchogue advanced news story reported the massive Westinghouse motors and dynamos installed. However, the real story was the tower. This, they described in detail as it was growing in size. When completed, it was to be 100 feet in diameter at the base, 210 feet above the foundation, and 90 feet across the top. Mainly built of wood, there would be 50 tons of iron and steel and nearly 50,000 belts for fastening the timbers together. Under the center of the tower was a well 12 feet square that had been dug to a distance of 120 feet to water. This was encased with 8-inch timbers and at the bottom, below the waterline, a system of four tunnels driven out a distance of 160 feet to the north, south, east, and west. There was mystery surrounding all this construction, as its use was unknown. Following Tesla, a bit later in 1901, Senior Marconi, rapidly becoming a celebrity and successfully demonstrating ship-to-shore radio communication to the U.S. Navy, and establishing his American company in 1899, built wireless stations along the coast. His first on Long Island was Sagaponic, then Babylon was rented in 1902. The Sagaponic station was to prove to be one of the busiest on the island. Messages poured in and out. Lost baggage was located and sent to the owner. In 1906, Marconi Company added Seagate to their family of coastal stations. In Babylon, a shack was built for the training of radio operators. These men would work the coast and ship stations. The equipment was rented to the Navy and ship owners. The operators hired by them to operate and maintain the equipment. This shack was later purchased by Armstrong and given to RCA. It now stands outside the Frank L. Karras City Elementary School in Rocky Point. From the beginning, there was a rivalry brewing between these two wireless pioneers. Asked his opinion of Marconi stations, Mr. Tesla remarked that they were networks of flimsy wire. Considered electrically, they were positively ridiculous. 1903, the U.S. Navy built a station using Marconi's equipment at Montauk Point. This station was later moved to Fire Island and located near the lighthouse. 1907, Imagine the shock received by radio operators on the USS Dolphin docked at the Brooklyn Navy Yard when opera singer Eugenia Ferrar's voice came over the air, singing, I love you truly. This was an experimental broadcast to test Dr. Lee DeForest's radio telephones. It was also a first step towards broadcasting. 1909, the RMS Republic, a steam-powered ocean liner was in a collision while sailing for the White Star Line. A CQD distress call was issued on the new Marconi radio device, the first recorded, resulting in the saving of 1,500 lives. This event proved the importance of radio at sea. 1911, the German Telefunken Company purchased land in West Sayville and built an experimental and ship-to-shore station. A competitor of Marconi, the German company was dedicated to improving wireless communication. They formed an American company, the Atlantic Communication Company, with chairman and board consisting of German Americans. Purchasing the rights to Armstrong and Tesla's patents, the station became the first to consistently reach Europe. When war broke out between Germany and Great Britain, Telefunken was used as the German ambassador's link with Berlin with President Wilson's approval. It was later used by the German military to send information about illegal armed shipments sailing out of New York. This placed Sayville in the war before the arrival of the Zimmerman telegram brought the United States into the war. 1920, the station that is to become the RCA Radio Central Transmitting Site is built in Rocky Point, the receiving station in Riverhead. In November of 1921, President Warren Harding pushed a button and sent a message of hope and peace to the world opening the Rocky Point station. After the message was sent, the assembled people were treated to a fireworks display. It was Alexanderson's alternator that enabled RCA to transmit signals all over the world. Many inventions came out of the RCA think tank. 
One, the television tower built onto the top of the Empire State Building. The U.S. government sponsored a meeting that brought many of the most gifted radio pioneers to Washington, and then to Radio Central, Rocky Point and Riverhead, and to WEAF, RCA's experimental broadcasting station in Belmore. 1924, WGBB began broadcasting on December 13, 1924, in Freeport, Long Island's first commercial station. Its first location was a Bedell Street garage, an AM station in 1966. The station was later moved to Merrick. 1927, WEAF, RCA's experimental broadcasting station began remote broadcasting from Manhattan to the transmitting station in Belmore. 1927, RCA Radio Central and Rocky Point hosted an international radio conference from Washington, D.C. The participants traveled to Long Island where they visited both the Rocky Point and Riverhead stations. They also visited experimental broadcasting station, WEAF, in Belmore. 1928, McKay took over operations at the West Sable radio station from the U.S. Navy, combining wireless with telegraph. McKay, whose father was noted for working with the laying of international cable, combined radio with telegraph communication. 1930, McKay left West Sable for Brentwood and a successful stay there while the CAA took over West Sable and established a beam station, landing airplanes at MacArthur Airfield on the beam. 1930, press wireless, Hicksville Transmitting Station, Baldwin Harbor, the receiving station, in Brentwood from 1942 to 1962. A news service. 1938, murder at Amagansett Naval Radio Station. Navy radio operator shot to death. The suspect, another radio operator, confessed to the murder. 1940, the CAA established a beam station in West Sayville, landing planes with radio, aeronautics, and radio working together. The CAA later became the FAA, and they continued using the station, later for communications, between land and air, until 1998. 1941. Extensions were added to the McKay Radio and Telegraph Building in Brentwood to house the VOA. Three 50,000-watt transmitters, with the support of an array of directional antennas, sent programming to Europe and South America. Long Island's association with radio continued as fire departments, police departments, civil defense, and many devoted amateur radio operators used the airways for emergency work. 1958, William Hagenbotham of Brookhaven Laboratory invented the first video game, Pong, for visitors to the lab to enjoy. The story continues with Long Island's first commercial television station, WSNL-TV, that went on the air on November 13, 1973. Sadly, it closed shop in 1975. Long Island continues to be a home for radio and television and the new technology sprinting forth from these roots.